There's a revolution happening across our cities that is redefining the way we work and live. What we're seeing from technology and culture is that it's changing the environment and our own understanding of what it, what, what it is that we do with our time. We increasingly work collaboratively and it's everything that we produce is probably not a product of one person. These disruptions are making it hard for some to see what the future holds. I think there's a lot of concern about it, but I think a lot of it is a failure of imagination. The real issue and the thing that people need to be concerned about is are people capable of making the transition? My name is Aaron Maniam. I think of myself as a curious generalist. I'm also a poet, a policymaker, and a futurist. I'm interested in how governments and societies transform themselves with the use of technology. One of the biggest questions I want to tackle is how can we become more fulfilled at work in this age of technological disruption? I want to test my ideas using a social experiment of sorts, one that can possibly point a way forward for all of us. And I hope to uncover a blueprint for how we can all work better in this new age. The very definition of that word work is something that has had a long history and is still evolving. Can we as people thrive in this age of disruption? And I believe that work doesn't just need to be a chore or a set of routines that we go through. I think that work can be a deeply meaningful part of our lives. It can give us a sense of who we are and who we want to become. And one of the ways I think we do this is by bringing our whole self into the work that we do. Our interests, our passions, the things we learn and experience in our families. And if we can do that, I think work can become so much more powerful and much more than just a four-letter word. I really want to run an experiment, test out some of these ideas, and I need four people over the space of four months. During this time, I'll throw little things at them, little interventions, little experiments, little steps that they can take in their work lives, and we'll see where that leads us. My name is Adlin. My name is Abhilash Murthy. I am 43 this year. I kickstart the project by putting out an open call for volunteers to join my test group. They must represent the spectrum across different age groups and different fields. I'm a consultant for house brands. No, I'm actually a practicing nurse. I think it's time to make, a bo uh, make more money. I want to be a true boss to my craft. I'm just one of those people which, you know, just takes things as it comes. The first profile I picked works in a traditional business that's feeling the full force of today's disruptions. I'm Fu Wei, I'm 29 years old, and I'm the managing director of Mothercare. So obviously fashion was a key driver for us. Uh, E-commerce did very well. My dad started the business 30 over years ago, and I joined the business in 2013. So areas that we need to improve on and that we need to think about pre-orders, I don't think it works anymore. My background is actually in neuroscience. So everything that I did up to that point was research, research, research. You see the below? Yeah. Yeah, actually we put pallet. Uh, it's all pallet ties. So it's all off below. When my dad sent me to the US, right, he was like, yeah, study whatever, you know. I was like, oh, should there be anything particular I should major in? He's like, no, study whatever you want because it's the last time you get to do whatever you want. <laughs> I was like, think myself, what does that mean, man? No, because they want to give this away. Uh. It's quite nice, what? I get a lot of pressure thinking about, you know, I've got over 150 staff. Would you buy any of these? How much would you pay for this RAM? 15. 15, is it? The decisions that I make, right, will directly affect their livelihood and their family's livelihood. So it's very important to me that the business continues to make money and also be sustainable for the future. Looking at the crowd, I saw no one I knew. Blurry vision.
visions of nothing no my second profile is someone from a non-traditional industry. I'm Abby, Abby Simone. I'm a singer-songwriter. I'm 27 this year. Yeah, I'm a full-time musician. My Ben and I, we are like a startup company. Our products are music. When people come to us for our product, we want our craft to have its value. And that's when the actual business starts. Round and round and round and round. I used to teach at an autism school and when I quit my job, I was like, yes, you know, I'm finally ready and it's like anything you see in the movies except there's probably two dollars left in your bag. When she starts singing, then you come back. I feel like everyone has many different sides to them and it's important to have that because if everything is you, I don't think things will get done. I also feel that it is important to include someone in a very 21st century sort of job. My name is Raymond Chan. I'm 39 this year. And uh, basically, I'm a data scientist. Hi, Raymond. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've already been a full-fledged scientist for about five years doing academic research, but there's a significant pay increase when you go from academic uh, research over to industrial work. I like basically to impact uh, an organisation in a very, very broad scale. If I change role in future, definitely I think it will be much more of a leadership role, much more of a strategic role. Raymond, I think I have some ideas for you on how we can help you get more effective and more fulfilled. You're game for anything, right? Almost anything within well-defined limits. Okay, almost is good enough. I'll take almost for now. Yeah, yeah we can Thank work you. with that. Yeah. Yeah. Breathe in. To round up my test group, I want someone a little older. Someone trying to get back into the workforce after some years away. My contacts lead me to freelance yoga teacher Sarah Manning. All right, so squatting or sitting. In the late 1980s, Sarah was one of Singapore's first yoga practitioners. But today, she finds that just being a good yoga teacher may not be enough. Hi Sarah. Hello. Nice to meet you too. So, I hear you want to get back into the workforce. Correct. I'm, I've been away three years just looking after family. Technology has moved on and mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just tough. You mentioned technology. How does technology fit into the teaching and the whole experience? These days, if you don't have an Instagram account, you don't get asked to do the workshops that you perhaps could have done. And for you personally, what would coming back into the workforce mean for you? Because my teaching gives me an identity. I first started off as an engineer, and then when I got married and moved out here and started following my husband, I became a trailing spouse. Oh, I'm Steve's wife. It's still nice to also be somebody yourself. My plan is this. I want to put my four volunteers through a series of interventions over the next four months. Interventions designed to help them discover skills beyond what they do regularly. My main premise lies in the emerging idea of the polymath. A polymath is someone who has a core expertise, but has also developed a broader range of skills based on his or her interests. The thinking is that honing two or more skills rather than focusing on one key expertise can lead to creative breakthroughs. For instance, Nobel Prize winner Francis Crick cracked the code of our DNA structure, a problem deemed unsolvable by biologists. He solved it with instincts coming from his physics background. I really think that we're, we we're coming into the age of the polymath. And I think it's super important because most of our jobs are really a part of very complicated systems. When you switch modalities between art activities and science activities and reading activities and social activities, you're actually refreshing the brain in different states. When you have polymaths, it's amazing because you can actually prototype the problem from different perspectives. Every time you, you change your perspective, you can change like how you're visualizing it, and that can get you to uh, you know, innovation or, the, or the solve the problem a lot faster. Now I've got my premise, but I still need a way to control the values of my experiment a form of measurement that can help me gauge any change or mindset shift within my test group. Hi, Jay. Hey, hi, Aaron. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Yeah, take a seat. Thank you. 
Jay, so we're actually trying to do a, an experiment of sorts here. Mm -hmm. you know, put four people through a series of experiences and look at how much they change or how much they don't change. And we're interested in using your survey, in a sense, as a baseline for that, to look at when we do the survey now versus later, how much people actually evolve. So I think there are going to be three main components that we look at. Mm -hmm. One is personality, okay. second is work culture, and third one is work interests. If we could align people with their interests, they would be a lot more motivated, a lot happier, yep. a lot more satisfied at work. Have you done this before? Uh, no. We'd like you to take a series of assessments. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to understand what's the natural inclination of people, mm -hmm. right, as opposed okay. to what they're trying to become, because technically everybody can become the same thing. So there are actually many different ways to sort of measure personality out there. One of the main models that has emerged is called the five-factor model, or the ocean model. And that one has been used for the past 50 years or so. This will be interesting, especially since I think it's more intimate. You know, I mean, you don't usually think like, would you ever want to design artwork for a magazine, right? I'd never thought about that. I've always just appreciated it, but now to think about it, like, would I want to? Actually, no, not really, you know? So it's quite interesting to, I can't wait to see the end result. I'd like to share the findings on uh, Fu Wei in three aspects. On personality, I think what's very distinctive about Fu Wei is that he is very, a very conscientious person. He thinks before he does anything. Right. Um, in terms of uh, work interests, Fu Wei is somebody who uh, likes investigative work. He likes to find issues and solve problems. What's most distinctive about Abby is her measure of agreeableness. Um, and agreeableness is not about her being somebody who likes to say yes, but rather a measure of her warmth as a person. Um, she's actually quite balanced in terms of the different kinds of work types that she likes, but what she tends to like less are work types which are very much defined by rules. Sarah's survey results suggest that she's a very nurturing figure, except that she may not be as open to trying new things. She does, however, have great motivation once she identifies a goal. Raymond, on the other hand, is highly motivated and will throw himself into work that he's passionate about. He's big on ideas, but may need help to be more sociable. In four months' time, the four of them will take the survey again to see if the experiences they're about to embark on have changed the way they think about things in any way. With these controls in place, I begin my first intervention, a mentorship scheme designed to help them uncover new skills to complement their existing expertise. A first step towards entering the age of the polymath. Tennis, you're coping really well. You're joking. <laughs> All these things that died in me just got mm. revived. My name is Aaron Maniam. I'm a poet, a policy maker, and currently also a PhD student working on research on governance in the digital age. I'm conducting a social experiment to see if we can become happier and more fulfilled at work by developing ourselves into polymaths, individuals who have one core expertise supplemented by a broader range of additional skills. Leonardo da Vinci was one such famous polymath. He was an architect, scientist and artist all at the same time. Today, we are heading into town, Southbridge Road and we're going to meet up with my mentor. Uh, I've got no idea what challenge these guys have cooked up for me today, um, but we're just going to have a go and have some fun and take one step at a time. Sarah Manning will be the first of my four volunteers to go through this first intervention, a mentorship scheme under someone from a different field to see how well they pick up something new. Sarah is trying to get back into the workforce but has fallen behind with all the tech disruptions affecting our world. Sarah, tell me, how exactly do you want to do this adapting to the 21st century? My main mission has always been to help people. In yoga, we can empower people to be more aware of what is happening in their physical body, but also their vitality and their energy. What? would be most useful for you? What do you want to get out of this whole experience at the end of the few months we spend together? 
it's just an opportunity to to spend time with with young, interesting people and really push the boundaries of what I know in terms of technology. Hello. Hi, is Abby around? Yeah, it's me. Oh, hello. Hi. Sorry, Abby is the tech wizard behind Bus Uncle, a chatbot that helps users navigate bus services in Singapore. I haven't got a clue why I am here. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a um, magical mystery tour. Yes, that's, it's, a, it's the same for us too. <laughs> ah. <laughs> we are Bus Uncle Company. A Bus Uncle Company, okay. Yeah. And um, what we do is we build these robots called chatbots that actually talk back to you. I mean, if you text them, they actually talk back to you and do things for you. Okay, so it's like having your personal assistant, but it's a robot. Yes. Wow, this is scary <laughs> stuff. But that's all very well. <laughs> How's that going to help me with my current dilemma or challenge? Right. So the challenge, I guess, is um, we want you to try to build your own bot. You're joking. <laughs> Um, so first thing is we'd want to open up a Google Doc. D-O-C-S. D-O-C-S. Docs stand for that. Imagine the entire scenario that a user would go through with the chatbot. So we're setting a scenario, presumably. We're setting a scenario. I have neck, shoulder, back, aches. Okay, so like all this is stuff I'm guessing that the user would tell to the chatbot. Oh, so no, I'm just, it, what I'm trying to answer is, why would someone come to my bot? Mm -hmm. Why would you go to the trouble? Right. You know? Yeah. Okay. What so are, I mean, what are the needs that we're trying to address here? Yeah. Drawing out the information from here, uh, it's not impossible to actually make something that potentially could have an impact on people. So we've been targeting very much on office ergonomics. If we can use something like this bot to reach out to people, we could have a big impact. So this is just perfectly timed. I'm reinventing myself and using technology, which is all very, very new. It's definitely harder for us to remember what it was like in the pre-internet era, because yeah. we spend the most of our life in You're the totally post. dependent on it. We're totally dependent on it, yeah. Clearly they work incredibly long hours. Um, they've, put, they've put their heart and soul into this startup business and it's just starting to pay them a salary. What a tough existence. Perhaps what today has taught me is there are lots of companies and people out there who can help you. And don't struggle on your own because that process, that steep learning curve, is agony. And I've been on it for a while, and it's been agony. The realization that I just have to use the word, help me, uh, and recognize what it is I'm trying to do, and then ask someone to help me, um, is definitely a, a, it's time. Somehow got to sell yourself. While Sarah learned some new skills in the next two days, I shift my attention to Raymond, the data scientist. Raymond has secured a new job for himself, where he'll be managing a team at a local tech company. Hi. Raymond will need to communicate a lot more than he has ever done as a data scientist. So, I mean, to be honest, I mostly did not have a lot of training in articulating and communicating. It's an uphill battle. And I think part of this journey for you might be about you know, gaining that greater self-awareness yeah. so that we can make you more effective, more fulfilled at the work that you do. Yeah. Raymond's new role as lead researcher at CHOP okay. requires him to communicate his ideas clearly to his team. Raymond. Yes. Hey man, Brian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How's it going? Not too bad. I want to help him stretch his communication skills with an outdoor activity. Raymond, hey. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, good to see you again. Good to see you too. Are you excited about this new job? Uh, definitely. Of course. What's exciting? I am. What's exciting? Work that is uh, will be fairly new to me. 
So right. I'm always looking forward to doing new and more interesting things. Do you think there'll be elements in the new job where you can do some of the communication work you talked about? The oh, most certainly, because uh, once you kind of go up to the next level, you need to kind of communicate a lot more mm -hmm. with uh, management and stakeholders on uh, how things are supposed to work. So, Raymond, yes. you know, You've done other things in the past that require communication, right? Yes. You mentioned doing things like history tours, for instance. Yes. I think it'll be interesting for you to use some of your experience with tours yep. to build up your communications muscle. Okay. Right? That think about how you can use that in your work as well as in your um, in leading your team. Yes. Yeah, I'm very excited already. Cool. Yes. So the specific challenge would be this. If you can design a history tour and take me on it sure. in the next few days, I think that could be a lot wow. of fun. Wow. Okay. Okay. Can yeah. you do that? No, most certainly we can do that. I mean, we're in a good area here, right? There's yes. a lot of history around us yes, already. Yes, yes. But you, you pick the area. Okay. You pick, um, you know, where you want to take me. Long enough for you to exercise some of that communications muscle. Okay, okay. okay. Wow, okay. That's going to require a lot of research. Having set the stage for Raymond's next step, I focus my attention on the third volunteer for my social experiment. Actually, we tried to make sure that everything is unisex, right? Huh? Fu Wei is the Managing Director of Mothercare, a UK franchise brought into Singapore by his father. Now, he has plans to overhaul the family business by harnessing the technology of our times. Are there things that have been particularly you know, on your mind or worrying you? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think that our business model is all retail, uh -huh. traditional br bricks and mortar. It's not a sexy business to be in. Right. And uh, when you face so much disruption, it's, it's challenging. Uh. So say you've succeeded in all the things you want to do. What would be different about the business on that day? I guess we would be a lot more forward-looking. The type of people that we have, they'll embrace change easily. They will no longer be doing a lot of the nitty-gritty stuff. Just running through the event. Sure, sure, yeah. You do what you need. As managing director of the company, Fu Wei should already have a broad array of skills. But are there areas where I can help him see things a little differently. So this is an expectant parents event. So we've got a panel of mothers, right, who are just going to talk about, you know, things that they never knew um, before motherhood. You guys done something like this before? No, it's our first time actually. So I've got my marketing team here. Okay. And they've really done all the heavy lifting. What's your role in the event? Making sure that everything goes smoothly. Okay. Yeah. Baby planner basically help moms plan the arrival of their babies. Do you think you have a plan in place for you know slowly letting go of more and more so that oh, you yeah. can over? Of course, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I I don't want to hold on to so much. Right. Yeah. So eventually. Right. I so think what is the plan? How how long is this phase? Uh, one to two years. Future moms out there enjoy this period of time. Fuwei is already displaying some polymathic abilities with his attempts to push the family business beyond the traditional retail space. Now he wants to build a strong company culture with self-motivated staff. Where will my first intervention take him? My name is Aaron Maniam. I'm a poet, policy maker, and a scholar. I'm conducting a social experiment to see if we can become happier and more fulfilled at work by developing ourselves into polymaths, individuals who have one core expertise coupled with a broader range of secondary skills. Just like how Elon Musk is a computer scientist, entrepreneur, and designer all at the same time. I think being a polymath is uh, the state of perpetual learning. All the polymaths that I know basically spend all their time learning. That's their habit. And the more you do it, the better you get because you start like from one area, but you see connections to other things and you need to be able to see connections because, you know, we live in a complex environment. Understanding complexity of interactions is really important. I've gathered four volunteers who will go through interventions designed for that purpose and aimed at broadening their skills and shifting their mindsets. If you can design a history tour and take me on it. Wow, okay, okay. But before I proceed with the next two volunteers, I need to deepen my own understanding of the subject matter. I decide to call on an old friend to seek her perspectives. Hi. How are you? I am good. Good to see you. Thanks for making time. Ah, no worries. 
thanks for being part of this little experiment that I'm okay. doing. Yeah, sure. it's just an exploration really of, of uh, the work journeys of four different people, and okay. I wanted to just tap into your wisdom. You know, I know you're thinking okay. a lot about social capital and empathy and the human relationships in teams. Okay. I, so I'm wondering what advice you would give them to to be more effective and to be, find the work that they do more more meaningful. The first thought that comes to mind is when people say they would like to be more effective at the work that they do, it can mean many different things. Yep. There's a question mark around uh, why am I doing this mm -hmm. that may not be resolved yet. Right. And that is very linked to a very personal identity question, which is who do I want to be? Right. And the greater clarity he gets around who do I want to be and why do I do this work, yeah. then as a leader, you can translate that clarity down to mm -hmm. the organization about, okay, then who do I want the organization to be? Right. And why does the organization exist? So it might seem like, why do we have to ask such existential questions in mm. business and work? Yeah. Um, but it's in the clarity of who we are and why we do what we do mm. that gives us a bedrock of certainty. I mean, a lot of us get obsessed about uh, things are being disrupted. How do we do things, you know, and all that. And that's true. But remember, the, the certainty was never in what you do and mm -hmm. how you do it. That will always change. Yep. But the certainty comes from that anchor of how clear are you about who you are, mm. why do you do what you do, and are you willing to keep opening and expanding that story right. so that right. more realms of what and how mm. are available for you. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. If self-awareness is an important step towards becoming a polymath and helping us feel more fulfilled, how can we also help others achieve that? Fuwe wants to improve his family business by building a company culture with motivated and fulfilled employees. I decide that it would be useful for him to talk to someone who's been doing just that. Hi! Hi. Nice to meet you! You too, good to see you again. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. He's running a family business, right? Mother Care. He's very involved in being the inheritor of this, this family business. He's a neuroscientist by training, but he's now got to work on this slightly more generalist role of running the family business. One of the things I would be interested to see him um, do really is to kind of um, set a vision Mm. Uh, and, and communicate yeah. because yeah. you know he has taken over the family business. People will assume that okay, well he's just an uh, heir apparent. Yeah. So what can he do, and how effective is he in kind of driving the company forward? Yeah. We have a lot of experience maintaining and building cultures um, that galvanize the, the entire company to a common purpose. So we call it purpose-driven employees. Mm -hmm. We find that uh, it's been really effective. Everybody knows where the company is headed, and everybody knows which part they can contribute mm. along the journey. Yeah. Fu Wei. Hi, Roger. Roger, nice to meet, nice you. To meet you. Welcome, welcome to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Have a quick tour of the office. Yeah, and definitely. Talk, First shop, time here. And wow. out the view. First thing you can notice mm -hmm. is the view. Um, training rooms. And that, that's before we kind of go into the guts of the office where work really happens. So, so, Roger, what do you do here? Oh, I run marketing and communications for LinkedIn across our Asian business. Mm -hmm. My job is to make people happy and make sure that our members, like yourself, I hope you are a LinkedIn member, I am. understand what to do so that they can get the most out of the platform. So, would you say that LinkedIn actually has a very strong corporate culture? We... I don't think we would use the word corporate. I think we have a strong culture which mm -hmm. kind of defines who we are. As Roger brings Fuwei deeper into the tour, in a different part of Singapore... We want to keep it short and succinct, right? Yeah. I mean, I would call it open-hearted shoulder stretch, open -hearted. but that's too long, right? Sarah Manning is just coming to grips with the very yes. technology that she fears. So naming, like, holding the table, standing up and pushing against you. it. You're trying to get your body in line, you keep your knees soft, and then sink the chest down. So it's actually opening the heart as well as stretching the, stretching the arms up here. So we've created this chatbot. The idea is that anybody, actually anybody in the whole world who is sitting at an office table, desk, and working on a computer all day, uh, they have a resource that they can use. So we're going to come from here. Let's start by looking at your seated posture. Yeah. OK, correct. so after that. Yeah. So we've been creating our chat box and building up the logic step by step. Step one, 
colon. 45 degree stretch. Yeah. So you're going to take your arms out to the side and draw the shoulder blades together. Yeah. You can also, you can also call it the Titanic pose. <laughs> Playing with different uh, visuals, we were struggling to find the pictures and the photographs that would have helped us. So that's why we then went down the avenue of uh, creating videos. One, two, three. So I'm going to find my base. I'm going to lengthen through the waist, lengthen through the knit, through to the top. It's been an adventure. I've had fun, but I have to say my brain is completely brain dead. It's just... <laughs> yeah. Okay, can we do the twist again later? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's do it now. So the challenge tomorrow is we've created it, but how do we get it out to people? That's going to be the challenge tomorrow. Okay. While Abby takes Sarah yeah. through the mechanics of her chatbot, I take on the role of mentor for Raymond. It is an exercise in communicating ideas, the first step in his journey to become a polymath. Good to see you. You all ready to wow me? Uh, I will try my best. <laughs> Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Take it away. I'm all yours. Okay, so uh, I'm actually not a historian and I've never done history. But you are a tech guy. Yes, I am a tech guy, right. so I will have to kind of uh, give you history through the lens of uh, a tech person, basically. Ooh. Let's go. All right. We saw cinnamon oh, so. here somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that is the cinnamon tree, endemic to this region. Mm. Which are... Ah, yeah, there we go. Yes, yes here we go. Okay. So the stuff we see in cinnamon now, like you know, when you have a cinnamon tea or yes. uh, cinnamon in curries, that is the bark. That is the bark. So right. I think it's basically scraped off huh. and then dried. So Raymond, why have you brought me to the Spice Gardens? What powers platforms? What powers platforms? In Singapore's context, what we are talking about is spice. The spices drove the trade, drove the network forward and brought everyone here. Okay. And that's why we're here, I guess. Exactly. Right. The major thing that makes makes or break a platform right. is scale. The person who wins is basically the person with the most number of networks and consumes the network of everybody else. Right. And the solution is why we are here. Stocks. Right, okay. Stock exchange. Raymond, what did you learn from this whole process? I think that I probably should have made the story smaller instead of making it so large. I, I, th I think I was like overly ambitious. Small is beautiful with messages, that is right? True. That is true. I, I think it's often said that, you know, if you can pare down your core message to one sentence, yep. right, then expand on it in different ways, yep, yep. that's often the most powerful kind of message. Yes. What did you learn from this process that you can apply in the job? So I think one of the things I, I will, I will, that I've seen myself being bad at is this, this thing with the trying to get too much information into too, too small a time. And I can't like go and fly in all different directions. I need to keep it focused. Yes. Yes. Having given Raymond a start on how he can improve his communication skills, I turn my attention to my fourth volunteer, singer-songwriter Abby Simone. What could a person who's already pursuing her dream job need? How would the idea of becoming a polymath apply to her? I think you're a really interesting case, you know, because you're already doing something you love and care about very much. Mm -hmm. And you want to acquire these other skills. Why? I want autonomy. I want to be able to one day, you know, hand this all over to someone. So things like marketing, things like finances. Yes, right. marketing, finances, getting booking the gigs. Hi guys, I'm on my way to shoot. After shoot, I've got to go to intermission bar for a gig tonight. But I'm really excited because tonight's theme is Queen. Buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise, playing in the street, gonna be a big man someday. Abby has been trying to grow her career by acting on TV. While being a polymath means diversifying yourself, it also means keeping all the different disciplines in balance. I wonder if Abby is doing that. Hi, Abby. Hey. I'll catch you later. Yeah, OK. Good. So tell me more, what have you been so busy with? I've been busy with shooting this drama, music stuff, you know, just still emailing, liasing with people. It has been taking me away from my music, but just two days ago, they told me that they are doing some song and they want my band to cover it. Mm -hmm. So the who's moment they? they... Sorry, who's the they? The production, the production Yeah, right. so, so the composer lah. So he was like, you know what, I would love if your band actually did a cover. And then suddenly, like, all these things that died in me just got mm. revived. You know, when we first spoke, you talked about 
wanting autonomy, right? Mm -hmm. And wanting control over things. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, it looks like you're not really in control. There's a lot of things pulling you in different directions, yes. a lot of demands. I feel like I'm, at, I'm back in 1800s where they, you know, they just put the men in the middle and then the horses will go in four different directions and right. then my, I'm just like right. that right now. Okay. Yeah, but... It's, it's a good thing, like, why? Because I'm not letting mm. them, like, dismember my body. Right. I'm still really very much intact, except it's just teaching me how to balance it all. Okay, scale of 1 to 10. Huh? Zero is, or is you're really struggling. 10 is you're coping really well with all the different demands on your time. Where are you now? Six. Okay. Weak six. Probably, like, mm. a strong five. So some struggle still. Yeah. To become a true polymath with multidisciplinary abilities, Abby would first need to find a way to manage her time and energy. Action. But what would be the best way for her to learn this? My name is Aaron Maniam. I'm a poet, policymaker, and a researcher. I'm conducting a social experiment to see if we can become happier and more fulfilled at work. A key idea is to develop ourselves into polymaths, individuals with diverse skills who apply the synergy of their different interests to become more creative and adaptable in this age of disruption. So we're going to come from here. Let's start by looking at your seated posture. Yeah. Okay, so Yoga after trainer that. Sarah Manning yeah. was the first of four volunteers to go through my interventions. Right. Interventions aimed at helping them discover if they can be more productive and fulfilled individuals by diversifying their abilities. I need to now figure out how to get into groups. That means I'm going to have so much more rubbish coming through my... <laughs> it's day three of Sarah's mentorship program, and there's still a lot to learn about how to make technology work for her. So now what you're doing is you're launching a product and you are telling everyone that you have been able to build something new. Mm -hmm. So today, we took our product, which is this chatbot, and we applied it to my Facebook page and invited all my friends to have a go at it and sort of explored how to not only send information out but also um, reach out to groups. Yeah, why not? Oh, it's been fun. It's, I mean, it's nice to be working with young, enthusiastic, busy people to learn a new skill. It's been really, really nice to have someone actually looking over my shoulder like a little angel um, while I press buttons on a computer because I hate to say my generation, but we are a little bit nervous about pressing the wrong button and heading down an avenue and never being found ever again, you know? So um, just having that undivided attention was total luxury. We thought it would be like quite hard, right? We actually thought it might actually take a lot, a lot of time to do this with her, but surprisingly, she's a really, really fast learner. By the end of six hours, she went from not knowing how to format something in PowerPoint to actually having her own chatbot teaching office yoga to people. So that was quite amazing. A very interesting experiment, um, and I hope that the, the experience that I've shared through that chatbot um, is a resource that people will find useful. Maybe I might decide to venture off into more office ergonomics and supporting. Uh, I mean, because it's something that definitely, there is even just this startup group, their desks are dreadful. Okay. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh yes, we want to give you a shirt. Oh, oh awesome. Shirt. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fue, who's already displaying polymathic instincts as he sets out to diversify the family business, is gleaning insights that could help him build a happier and more effective company. I've got actually quite an interesting question because yeah. this is one of the dilemmas that I'm currently facing within my organization. Okay. You know, sometimes you have someone who is very strong functionally, right? Come promotion time, how do you choose the best manager? I know that functional expertise and, and people management are two completely separate skill sets. So how do you usually identify potential leaders within LinkedIn? And if someone is really, really good at their job, 
how do you groom them to become like a manager? I think it's a great, great question. I think this promotion in terms of levels or promoting someone into a managerial role mm. um, to see like who will be a better manager I typically see three things so awareness do you know your stuff you clearly know because otherwise we're not going to promote you to the next level and if you know your stuff do you know what's happening what people think about you self-awareness and awareness about the industry and then secondly I think as a manager or, or a leader and they're, they're quite different I think as a manager, you need to extract yourself from the day-to-day -day a little bit. So sometimes I'm, I'm guilty of not doing that. Like when they send me a press release or a creative brief, I will analyze it to death and then I realize what I'm doing because I'm doing their job for them. I'm not doing my job. The third is, I think, vulnerability. I think someone who is always like, oh, I know everything, although I don't. Um, but I know everything, although I don't. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a red flag for me. You should be able to admit that you don't know um, and go find out or ask people to find out. Assuming you know everything is dangerous because you'll be making the wrong decisions, not for yourself only, but for the whole team. So I think these three things are just my little rule of thumb mm. for me. So this is where we have lunch and breakfast, so it's like a family. Having facilities like this really help the relationships, which is a core cultural tenet of the company. Like relationships matter. Connections between our members on the platform is kind of like the connections between employees. I think LinkedIn is, is interesting because they are in also human capital in some ways. We had a long chat about management, how to identify talent within an organisation. So I think our employees are purpose-driven. So we believe in one singular thing that we are all trying to do. And what was also very interesting is how I can use signals uh, in terms of what my competition is hiring for to actually recreate the organization's strategy for the future. Singer-songwriter Abby Simone is about to start her own mentorship program. For her, I decided that learning how things are juggled from a more corporate perspective may actually bring her closer to becoming a well-rounded polymath. So today, unusually, I woke up at 8.30, came over to the CBD area in office where not used to this. Hi, uh, I'm Abby. Oh, hi, I'm Nicholas. Hi, hi nice to meet you. I've been hi. expecting you. Yes. All right. Abby's mentor will be Nick from PR firm Rice Communications. And Nick feels that there's no better way for Abby to get her feet wet than helping out at an event that he's running. So I understand that you're looking to sort of build a brand for yourself mm -hmm. and you have an upcoming album launch as well. Yes. Right, so I think this is going to be a great experience for you to look at. Right, so what we have here today is actually the launch of the Thales Digital Factory. Thales has been here in Singapore for more than 40 years mm -hmm. and the digital factory is meant to give that a refresh because it's a change in the way they're working as well. So we are going with brighter, bolder colours mm -hmm. um, and a different launch gambit. It was really interesting because I got to know how they run it, how launches happen from the people to the food they serve. So the registration will be here both for guests and the media. So you'll be working with the team later to do with the media registration. Yeah, this is yours. And in the back, right, you have the press kit, the fact sheets, and you have the agenda for like everything. I was placed at the registration area to make sure that the media people got their goodie bags and then they got their name tags and, and that they arrived on time. I saw how they actually sent out messages for those who were late, like how they were trying not to be really pushy but also being polite. So these were all good information, like how you know you don't stress people out just because you're stressed. Internally and externally, it means in Singapore and overseas. Right? Mm -hmm. So I, according to them, it's Thales in Singapore mm -hmm. and externally is yeah overseas, right? yeah overseas. Yeah. Yes, I knew that. <laughs> the two keywords today is bridging people. Like just forming that bridge for diff people of different walks of life to come together for one event and feel like they're all part of that event. Ladies and gentlemen, let us please rise and put your hands together to welcome our guest of honour for this morning, Minister for Trade and Industry, Mr. Chanjun Singh. Three, two, one.
Now will we please ask our guests to remain on stage for photo taking? I learned so much, things like food and how it would cater to your profile. Right, and I think this experience will sort of give you an understanding of the different components, the different things that goes on at the same time. I think today's launch has sort of created a base for me to understand how launches happen and if I were to tell my story, how am I going to tell it besides my music? different walks of life to come together for one event. So I'm here in San Francisco and I just had the chance to watch the footage from all the different projects and internships that our four personalities have gone through. Fue clearly learned a lot from LinkedIn, particularly in terms of managing his team in a more effective way. I loved what Sarah learned from um, her mentor, Abby, because there, I think we saw an example of how she took on something completely new. And I think Abby learned a lot of interesting uh, things in terms of structure, right? How to organize uh, an event and how she might apply some of those organizational techniques in her own work and her own brand launches one day. I think what's key now is they've learned lots of individual sets of skills. We now need to think about what kind of new training can they go through? It's kind of like a magical mystery tour.